welcome to In The Game, presented by Maven Sports. I'm your co-host, Terry Johnson, and we are excited about today's show. We're well, welcome to be back as we close out the year, uh, 2021, getting ready for 2022. What a better guest to have today. For some of our new listeners, you say, well, what is In The Game really about? It's about an engaging, authentic conversation around sports, the competition of sports, from an athlete's perspective, from a coach's perspective, from a team, from a business side. We talk about all types of topics on this show. And today's topic is about what do you do when you face barriers? How do you break them down and still be successful from an athlete and a coach's perspective? And with that, I want to welcome my co-host, Travis Stryle. Allow him to introduce himself and then he's going to introduce our guest. But guys, we got a great show today. Travis, how are you doing, my friend? Hey, doing well, doing well. Thanks, Terry, uh, for the introduction. Yes, I am Travis Stroud, your host, uh, here with In The Game with Coach Terry Rubisky. Uh Coach Rubisky is uh, he's a legend. Yes. I think he's the last of a dying breed of, a be of being a man's man, right? Being a player's coach at the same time, but being that coach that uh, a get on you if you have to. Get on you is being like, <laughs> you know, get in you, if, if you will. Uh, Coach Terry Rubisky, uh played uh, college football at LSU, went on to be drafted with the Raiders and started coaching for 40 years, Coach. He's a 40-year coach. Uh, hadn't had an opportunity to be a head coach, but definitely wanted to get into all that coach. Good to have you here. It's good to be here. It's, it's, it's great, Trav. I know you and I got this great relationship. We've known each other for a while. Yes, sir. We've talked about it. Uh, we talked about it in the game. You know, you've told me about it, mentioned it to me. But now I get to see life, yeah. you know, and uh, I guess now that I'm here and I walked in the building, I can see why it goes like it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got a guy named Terry running. Yeah, 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 exactly. Two Terry's, two Terry's. Hey, that's it. We I gotta like it. Go. We got to flow, so we got to make it go. So it. I'm happy to be here and I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys got some great topics and uh, we'll have some good discussions. Yeah. I'm going to be I'm gonna be open. I'm going to be frank. You know, oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll touch we'll touch bases, touch, talk about the old and the new and uh, everything in between. Right. Yeah. So I'm ready, I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to rock with you. Guys. Yeah. Talk talk about um, you know just life. You know, being a uh, an athlete. Um, how did you end up back in the uh, early '70s? Right. Uh huh. Going to a PWI, and that's a predominantly white institution, versus going to a HBCU, which were dominant uh -huh. during that time. Mm -hmm. Right. What yeah. what 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 put you in uh, the position to end up at LSU. And were you a running back the whole time? No, no, I came, I, I went to high school, went to, it was funny, you know, I went to an all-black high school in Louisiana. Okay. A little, small, small town. I mean, it's, today, it's about seven, 800 people. Wow. You know I mean? but it's, okay. uh, I, I'll say this to you, Trev, you and Terry, my hometown is, you got to take, at one point in time, you had to take a ferry, okay. a bridge to get there. You still got to take a ferry bridge to get to my hometown. Wow. We don't have no policemen. We don't have no stop signs. We don't have no red lights. We don't have no AM, PM, 7-Eleven. We, we got nothing in my hometown but love. What? Wow. Nothing in my hometown but love. Well, we you need to grab some of that. That tell you. Yeah, we do. And all we do. You don't need me to go. All, <laughs> all, I, all I gotta do is say, hey, this is Terry. Yeah. Uh, Terry's coming. Yeah. Okay. And everybody gonna know Terry. Everybody's gonna know Terry. I say, hey, meet, listen, meet Terry down there. Meet him down there by the sign. Now, the sign is a sign that says, welcome to Lucy. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? It's my hometown. It's called Lucy, Louisiana. Okay. But like I said, as you get there, everybody start looking at it. They'll look at you and Terry and you know, well, most people, they're gonna say, hey, come on, you want something to eat? Yeah. They know y'all want something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know y'all two want something to eat, so. Hey, you know, we've been working out. Yeah, 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 But, you know, everybody on meet you there, I mean, everybody got the doors. We still don't lock our doors. Everybody yeah. knows everybody, it's all family, man. But yeah. the one thing that I can tell you was nobody no, I, I don't think anybody in America was going to outcompete us. Yeah. And I would play in sports, and that was our, that was our life from a little bit. Of, and you know how that is. You yeah. up your big brother play, you go play. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'll tell you this, man. Listen, I've I've traveled the world, and I've hung out with some of the best. Okay. You know, I've hung out with Dr. J, Reggie Jackson, Marcus Allen, Barry Bob, Jerry Rice, all of them. Recently, and, uh, Reggie Jackson. Recent, Reggie, I played golf with Reggie recently. Mm -hmm. like, but. I'll say this to you, I still believe in my heart one of the best athletes I've ever seen is a guy named Haywood Jack. Haywood Jack. Haywood Jack. Now everybody, 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 everybody all over the world has got one homeboy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was just it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Everywhere you go, whatever community you're from, whatever little town you stop in, yeah. we all got one. Well, Haywood Jack was ours. Yeah. Okay. And Haywood Jack was the guy that, From Lucy. 
from Lucy Lucy. Okay. okay. And Hale Jack was the guy that when he would walk in the room, you know, I was Okay. You know what I mean? Like, wow, who is this? You know what I mean? And the guy was just it, man. I don't care what it was. If it said sports, yeah, this cat could do it and he can do it better than anybody I've ever seen. Was he older or younger? Older. He was yeah, older, so, was that, me. so did he play running back? No, he, he, would, he would play quarterback, he played receiver. Uh, he would play when he wanted. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, it sounded like he played with his position. He would, play, he would play when he wanted, you know what yeah. I mean? But he would Jack was one of those guys, man, that uh, he just loved sports yeah. and everything else didn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just he decided one day he wanted to play golf. Yeah. Just yeah. grab, he just grabbed somebody's stick and said, yeah, I'm not going to play. And okay. I started working his game, working his game. He became a scratch golfer yeah. and started playing all over the state of Louisiana. Yeah. Decided he decided he wanted to play tennis. Became one of the best tennis players in the whole state of Louisiana. Yeah, that is. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just a, he just was a, that one. Was that guy, right. You know, yeah. but, you know yeah. what's interesting, Coach, you mentioned the small town you're from, the high school being predominantly black, going to this large institution in Louisiana and breaking through. What, what do you think was the common factor where you just knew no matter what my situation was, I am going to succeed? You succeeded in high school, did very well. Unless you did very well, went on the pros. There's something common there, I would say. Would you? Yeah. What was it? Can you share this with Yeah, I think it was just like I said. I think it was just the the ideal of growing up with Hayward Jack, I mean, mm. my brother who was a running back, and mm -hmm. my, my cousin, my uncle was a great match. I've had two uncles that I think played in the Masters. You know what I mean? So all everybody there was all about compete, 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 work, work, work. Okay. Okay. That's all we knew. The one thing I knew my whole life. And I knew that at a very early age was Travis. You wouldn't go out work me. Mm. The next man, the next man up, wouldn't go out work me. You might out hit me. You might out catch me. You might out run me. Yeah. But you ain't go out work me. I work me. And, and I don't care what it is. It didn't make a difference. We could be outside building a block wall. I'm gonna lay the last brick. Yeah. I'm yeah. not gonna let another man out work. That me. is so yeah. true. I, I have a story on that, and we'll get back on it. I have an older son that plays baseball, and I remember he was about 12, and we had a chance to go to L.A. Um, to go to the Major League Youth Academy's former relationship with them. Yeah. And I took a whole group of young African-American boys who can play at that level, and they were very good. They were just excited to be in L.A. Yeah. But my purpose was to show him that there's another kid on the other side of the country yeah, that, wanted, yeah. that wanted just about yeah, as you. That's right. So the first day, that's right. he clean, looking good, ready to go, got his bag. We get to the to the academy, and we got there about 30 minutes early. Yeah. The other kids had already been there yeah, about right. an hour right. ahead. And doing. He right. looked at me and I go, hey man, I, right. I didn't know what we were going to do. Yes. He looked at his other teammates and himself. They made sure for the rest of the week, yes. we were at least an hour or two ahead of everybody. Because I kept saying, there's another kid that's just like you. Yeah. Yeah. That's hungrier. That's hungrier. Hungry. That's when I work. That's exactly right. So that is so true. You guys be willing exactly to do the work and be better than that next exactly man right. who you don't see yeah. in front of you. Yeah, we're in a vain society now, man, to the point where, you know, Guys, it's all about self, right? right? And emulation, you had the Hayward Jack to pour from. You had, what, 10 yes. brothers and sisters. Yes. I had two older brothers to pour from. Right. Um, at the end of the day, what, what's your thoughts on not really copying, but taking bits and pieces from uh, certain athletes, aspiring to be uh, like somebody else? I know a lot of times the athletes, we don't ask to be role models at the end of the day. Right. We're kind of uh, pushed in that, in that kind of uh, role. Uh -huh. How do you feel about athletes uh, turning that away or embracing that? Like, what, what's your thoughts in that regard? It depends on the individual. To be honest with you, some guys uh, I don't understand it. Yeah. Because I think uh, some guys become role models before they're ready. Yeah. I think some guys become they become uh, anointed. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a role. He, he don't need to be. Yeah. He haven't he haven't got there yet. But then there's other guys that uh, tell you, you know, yeah. I'm not here to be a role model for your kids. You know, and those guys are. Uh, guys, I kind of recognize and, and understand where they are, you know. But I, I believe that personally, for me, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't think you could ever stop giving back to uh, kids and communities and people. I don't care what it is because I know where I got it from. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I got it from my community. Yeah. Uh, I got it from the older guys that led me, mm. and that told me. I know what it did for me. Absolutely. You know, you had an example. I had a big, if the big bridge example. out of the road, mm -hmm. why you want to cross that bridge? That's and question. I just told yeah. you it was out of the road. Yeah. Yeah. I told you that. You know exactly. what I mean? That's the biggest thing. But that was the biggest thing. I knew for me the biggest thing was I wanted to do something different. Yeah. I wanted to go a different way. I didn't want to I didn't really want to follow their path. I wanted to go ahead and blaze my own trail. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's how I ended up at LSU. You know, I, in reality, you know, I committed to Oklahoma. 
I committed to Oklahoma. I went up to Oklahoma with a friend of mine, Jerry Reese. Okay. We went up to Oklahoma, visited Oklahoma, and Greg Pruitt set it on fire that weekend. I think he scored like, that touchdown. Oh, I thought you. I thought no, 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 and uh, Chuck Fairbanks was the head coach. Okay. So I went in, got up Saturday, well, well, hung out. Before I left, I committed. Hey, I'm coming here. But then the next day, or the next two days later, Monday, Chuck committed to going to New England as the head coach. Mm. So when he decided he was going to leave and go to New England, I'm like, he don't give a crap about me. Right. You know, I'm not sitting here committing to him. This guy, he didn't tell me he was getting ready to leave. So I dropped the Bear Swiss, little old Bear, we still friends, but Bear became the head coach of Oklahoma. And then I just changed my allegiance to But what happened to me was being able to have that father figure. I had a grandfather who was a big sports guy, was a great athlete, but that was my mentor. You know, everybody looked at other people, but that was my guy. Yeah. And then my grandfather was a very intelligent person. Learn how to speak French. I don't know where he got it from, you know. <laughs> this guy grew up in that little town. There wasn't no French people there, but he learned it, you know. Okay. So he called me, come on over, I went over, sit down and talked to him. And he laid it on the table to me of how, you know, hey, listen, do you plan on retiring and going to live in Oklahoma? I said, no, I'm going to live here with my mom and my dad and my family, and I'm going to raise my kids here. Then you need to go to school here. You know what I mean? And he says, blah, 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 blah. So he explained to me about grandma. He explained to me about LSU. Okay. But he said something about LSU that I think kind of little, it lit that fire from me. Okay. He said, you got to understand where you're from. Okay. And then you got to realize if you go to LSU, you're opening up doors mm. that has never been opened. Mm -hmm. He said, now it takes a real man to do that. Yeah. And if that's the man you say you are, don't be afraid of it. It's a bad and, and when he said, because I was afraid to go to LSU, because at that time, black athletes, especially in Louisiana, wasn't going to LSU. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I was afraid. But when he made that statement to me, it was powerful. Yeah. And from that, I went to LSU and ended up happening. Uh, Grandma was uh, grandma was in the picture because I had an uncle who had gone to Grandma. All my buddies had gone to Grandma. Doug Williams was coached by my uncle who went to Grandma. Doug and I, Doug Williams and I were great friends. Doug was going to Grandma, and uh, my brother, my other brother Vernon, had gone to Grandma. I had a lot of a lot of people, a lot of family members had gone to Grandma. I wanted to go a different way. I wanted yeah, to raise my trail. I wanted to raise my trail. So I went I went to LSU, and uh, it was it was it was interesting. You know, it was a, as he said to go open those doors. Yeah. That had never been open, and then I realized what was on the other side of those doors. Yeah, right. it was was, interesting. Tell yeah. me about that experience. Once you walk through the doors, you know you can see the big, beautiful, uh, beautiful house until you walk through the, the four walls. Right. How, how was the four walls being a, uh, a student athlete, mm -hmm. an African American, black, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, going into a predominantly white uh, scenario, knowing that you uh, you don't have a chip on your shoulder, uh, but you kind of bearing the burden of being one of the first to do it. What, 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 tell me about that. Well, the one thing I'll say is uh, what was interesting for me going there, uh, going to LSU, going there as the number one recruit in the nation. Mm. Uh, I wasn't going there, uh, I wasn't right out in Wichita. I knew where I was from. Yeah. Right. I knew what we had done. Right. Yeah. I knew what we had accomplished. Yeah. And one thing I can tell you was we, we, me and my teammates at that little small school, you know, even though we were class A, you could drive us on the moon, we'd get home. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing intimidated us. Okay. You know I mean? I got you. And I got to LSU and I had a lot of things that happened that was really eye openers for me, you know. Uh, it was very, very interesting, but it was fun. Yeah. And uh, to learn and to grow and to be a part of it, it was interesting. You know, my, my, my first, I tell people the story, my first uh, experience was uh, I went there and I'm sitting down with the uh, academic advisor and said, what do you want to major? Okay. I said, I want to be a carpenter. Okay. Because that's what I wanted to be. That's I wanted to be like my grandfather. Right. I wanted to be a carpenter. Yeah. And you know, when you grow up as a kid, you grow up with people, you peddling around the house. I loved it. I yeah. love. I loved carpentry. Mm -hmm. So the instructor says, "Oh, you want to be an engineer?" I said, "No, I don't want to be an engineer. <laughs> I told you. I want to be a carpenter." You know. And listen, I had you know a, a three five GPA and all. They thought I was smart and all. You know, but but she kept trying to tell me I want to be an engineer. So no, no, I don't want to be an engineer. Yeah, I just want to be a carpenter. Right. I just want to saw wood, nail nails. You know. Well, you gotta be, you gotta be engineers. Okay, all right. My first engineer class. I go to class. I'm sitting in the class. There's about 18 students in there. Walk in the door. We all sit down. Of course, I'm the only black, and I'm sitting right there in the front. I always want to be up front, you know. So I'm sitting up front. And the instructor starts going, bam, 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 bam. 
Okay, I thought this was like an introduction. This is <laughs> right. The first, this is the first day. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? He go and everybody writing. I'm just yeah. sitting there looking. Yeah. I ain't wrote nothing down because I thought we just going to introduce ourselves to the team. Yeah. 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 Right. And he says, okay, tomorrow we got a test. Got what? Yeah. What are you talking about? That sounds like being a football player. Yeah. Yeah. When y'all sit up in y'all's yes. office and y'all yes. think about yes. it, yes. 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 Just go <laughs> here we go and out this inside drill. That's the same. That's the same. You can't do that. It's exactly the same. I'm sitting in the room like, wow, what is this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, man, the instructor pulled me aside and he says, Terry, listen, man. He said, you terrible. I know who you are. Blah, blah, blah. He said, let, let me explain to you. Yeah. So you see those 20 kids and their students. He said, those 20 students that just walked out of here, he said, they're going to study 24-7 for the next five years that they're here. Yeah. All they're going to do is study every day, every day, every day. Yeah. He said, 80% of them are going to fail. They ain't going to make it. Mm. He said, all they're doing now is studying. He wow. said, you got football. You got football, you got football. Right. <laughs> you, got it. Yes. And you think you can come in here yeah. and you can pass my class. He said, you got no chance there. Mm -hmm. He said, you want to play professional football? I said, I don't know, I want to be a company. And he said, yeah, but you probably want to play professional football. He said, you go focus on that and go be the best you can be. Mm -hmm. And then you can always come back and do this. He said, but the seven thing, you can pair these two, two together, together and survive it. He said, you got no chance here. Thank you, I appreciate you. I left. So, you so know, how would you be able to have that com uh, conversation with your uh, your advisor once he gave you that conversation? I went back and told my advisor. I said, "Hey, I'm that guy was honest with right. you. You were <laughs> <was, you laughs> <was, you> <laughs> in that class. I want to be an engineer. I just want to saw a piece of wood. I can do that. You know what I mean? So uh, oh, it was tough, but I, I, you know, I stayed in and uh, you know, I left the class and went ahead and took another class and I did exactly what he said. I went back to football and said, "I want to be the best damn football player I can be." Wow. And then my mind went to. You know what? I'm here. I came here. With, I came here, quote unquote, with those accolades. Yeah, right. I'm gonna live up to it. Yeah. Right. Right? And I decided, okay, I'm gonna play as a freshman, and I did. I'm gonna score a touchdown as a freshman, and I'm gonna did. And I'm gonna be the first this, and I'm gonna be the first that. I'm gonna be the first that. Right. I'm gonna break his record and his record yeah. and his record. First thousand yard rusher. Sure. First yeah. thousand yard rusher. Right. And, uh, you know, I was SEC MVP. Uh, you know, LSU MVP. And I made up my mind. I'm gonna do this and this and this and this. And I did it. Every one of them I marked off, I scratched them off. I did them off. So that's, so that's important. Out. I want our listeners to understand when you put your mind to it and you stay focused and committed, you work at it, the success will come. I want to change the subject because I, I get on Travis and, you know, I had that moment. But take us to that that first moment, that first big game, home game in LSU. You were running out on, the, out on the field and you look around. How did that feel? Take us through that moment. Do you remember that, that first time in college? And then even then, the first time in the NFL. What is that first time when you go, okay, I made it to this point. Now it's my moment to show who I am. And was it like other first times? <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. It was. It was. It was great. You know what I mean? We all got those first. You're right. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it was. It was. Uh, it was exciting. But I tell you what, LSU. Uh, again, I'm from a little small town, so we didn't have all those. We had big games, right? Like, you know what I mean? But we didn't have big games. We all, you know, we'd have. You know, a thousand people, twelve hundred people, fifteen hundred people. We played. Uh, you know, we played for state championship. It might have been three thousand people. Right. Yeah, right. You know, we we had to go to the white school to play because our stadium was too small. But we had been in what we thought was some big games. You know, yeah. and we won them all. We 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 win all the time. So for, but when I walked out the tunnel at LSU, and like if you go there today, they still got them two old wooden goal poles. They don't have that <laughs> right. crossbar metal. They got two wooden goal poles like nineteen fifty. And you walk out there and you look up there and there's like 80,000 people, right? And when I walk out there, it was 80,000 people and I, you know, I don't remember the game, but we walk out there and you see them. And LSU was so bad back then. Not bad as a team, right. but the fans were crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of the things they would do when mm -hmm. people come in there, you know. Mm -hmm. And they'd be throwing bottles and I'm looking and throwing bottles at me. Wait, well, I'm on your team. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, was just, uh, it was just unbelievable. But the fear wasn't the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, our attention wasn't the game. The nervousness wasn't the game. Yeah. It was the fans yeah. and seeing eighty thousand people stand up, you know, purple and gold, screaming, hollering, yelling. Yeah. That was the wow. That was the cloud nine. That was the cloud nine. Now once I got out on the field and did my thing and made a couple of plays, then yeah. I'm good. I'm good to go. I was so you know like, exhausted after yeah. warm ups. Yes. Yes, and that was big one. That like, was a big sweating one. Sweating profusely. Yes. Thinking like I made it. Yes. It was about to faint. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm so tired. You know, it so had tired. to take that first hit yes. for me to settle in. Gotcha. 
So I've been mad. But I mean, your situation being one of the first uh, in that environment to where it was you and maybe 80,000 other people that didn't look like you. Yes, right. You yes. Know, at no least question. I had, you know, no friends and family, and mm -hmm. we had been able to kind of uh, break through barriers. Right. You were, the, right. I mean, you been the bit, you know, the bridge right. builder in that aspect. Right. Um, so how, how did you continue on after having that conversation uh, with your professor and, and, and having a rapport with your coaches and then the rest of the years at LSU and your transition with the uh, with the Oakland Raiders? Well, from that point on, uh, and, and kind of, you know, what you were touching base on a minute ago was when I got to LSU, uh, Mike Wayne was there. Mike became All-American and Mike was the man, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, Laura Hinton, he just got, God bless him, he just got inducted. Uh, uh, Last week, I think, got inducted in the Hall of Fame. It's mm -hmm. the first African American ever at LSU. Really? And uh, my hats off to him, you know. But That's Laura, awesome. Laura was uh, he was he was from out of out of out of college from Virginia. Mike was from New Orleans, and then we had Laura, uh, we had Laura, Mike, Richard, and Thala. Mm -hmm. So those four brothers were there, but they all had to sign quietly. People didn't really know who it was. Yep. Mike became the man, became you know the guy. But Mike was really really a quiet guy, you know. Okay. Then we they signed a guy from Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, Robert Dow was with me, and then Carl Willis Trimble was another guy they had signed that came in with me. Mm -hmm. So it was only like seven of us. I got you. But it was seven of us who were there to be quiet and shut up. Just and, to be seen and not you know, be seen, don't be heard, you know, no facial hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to shave your fit, shave your mustache, do this, cut your hair, yeah. your hair gotta be. So when all that stuff was going on, I'm looking at everybody and I'm like, okay, hold on a minute. Well then, it was different for me. Yeah, you know, because I come from a whole different world. I come from an all black community, all black high school, mm -hmm. Afro. So yes, you know, so it was a different world. You know, so I, I never forget we were in the first meeting and and Coach Max going through all the rules. And I'm sitting there, saying, I can't follow these rules. <laughs> right. You know? So we sit there, and then it had to change. You know what I mean? And we sat there, and I told him, I say, Hey, Coach, you know, we like that that guy, that Samson guy. You know. Get out straight from our hair. We, we don't shave our much there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, yeah. We can't shave this. We can't. Billy was hot back then. Right? Yes, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And I've been sitting down deciding back way back then that I want to go out on a date with Pam Greer. Yeah, exactly. So, so, <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't be bald headed right. with my face shaved right. trying, to, trying to pick up Pam. That ain't right. gonna work. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we had to start getting some things changed and, uh, you know, and, and coach decided, yeah, we have to, you know. And, and that was the first time I never had I never had to deal with interracial dating mm -hmm. because yeah. my whole hometown was kind of it's all black people, yeah. you know. So we got there and then we said, Coach, oh, there's one more rule. We want you to date in your race. Oh, that's what the coach said. Yeah. You know, the head coach says, Hey, hey, we want you to date in your race. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what does that you know, mean? I'm sitting there like and that's what I said to him. They what do you mean, date date in your race? What, what does that mean? You know, well we want the we want you to date African American girls. Okay. Okay, uh, where are they? I'm like, Coach, hold on now. We're on a campus here and there's 30,000 students and yeah. there's like 30 black students. Yeah. And none of them live on campus other yeah. than us seven athletes. Yeah. Like, you know, how are we going to need our race? Yeah. You know, and he says, well, you know, well, that's why we got uh, Southern University right down the street. But Southern's only about 20 miles away, you know. But it's okay for me because I love dating my race. If they date me, I date them. Right. You know? <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Right, you know what right, I mean? and, right. But that was just a shocker for me. Absolutely. And I had to have that discussion because I didn't, I didn't quite understand it. You know, and I had a couple of other things that came up that didn't make sense to me. And I've always been a guy. You got to make sense to me. A guy. You know what I mean? I've been raised that way. Now it started with my grand. It started with my father. Then it started with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And then that, for me, I just carried it with me. I don't care who it was. I could be sitting down with President Obama. He gonna have to explain to me why we gonna do it. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, and then the best thing that happened to me was I got drafted to the Raiders by a guy named Al Davis. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was a guy that simply told you, Terry, be a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terry, be who you are. It's just like this ring I got on my finger. Yeah. He said, I'm gonna make a ring that when the world see it, everybody eyes gonna get it. He said, and I've always said, once I got to this point, he said, I want you to put a ring on that if you ever met the queen in England, you don't have to take your ring off. You don't have to take your ring off. You gotta take the ring off. That's your guy. Wow. You know I mean? And that's the man that, uh, look, my father, my grandfather, unbelievable family, I love him to death. My next door neighbor, my uncle. But Al Davis molded me. Mm. Now he molded me for this NFL war. That's what I was about to say. You know he molded me for this. Yeah. So that's why I mean, from, that, from that point on, it didn't make a difference to me. You could put me in a room with 
the only it didn't matter. Listen, I'm telling people in the world today, I'm probably one of the only person, black, white, green, orange, no matter, yeah. that ever sat down and had lunch with Jesse Jackson. I said, I'm going to be having much with David Duke. And I mean, I'm the only guy in the world that could get together the KKK, David Duke, and Jesse Jackson. If I wanted to have a meeting, I could get them together and have a meeting. Absolutely. I met them both. I had lunch with them both. I have no problem sitting down with anybody. It doesn't make a difference to me. You know what I mean? If they said, Terry, we need to talk to Donald Trump, come about and stuff. Mm. We need to have a conversation. And he's going to respect you. No question. Because of who you are. You know, and that's just the way I am. That's the way I've been raised. Because I tell people that at the end of the day, you know, your heart be like mine, be like run through you like it run through me. We both gonna die, you know what I mean? So, you know, we travel different roads to get to where we are, but we're here. Yeah. How so, do we, I mean, how do we continue to, to pull from you a piece of you that we can plant and sow seeds and, and grow? Because like I said, your generation is, is scarily, you know, decreasing. But no question. You know, and, yeah, and, and for question. me. And the reason is, the reason is decreasing is because, uh, you know, I'm sitting there like Terry sitting there, I see Terry, young son over there. You know, it's like those youngsters, just like Terry's son sitting there, he will listen to me, most of them, or listen to me a lot more than he listened to his dad, Terry. Amen. We both Terry. You know, we both Terry. Yeah. But if that son gets close to me, or if you send him to me to my school, or you send him to my college, or he's on my campus, mm -hmm. or if I'm in Atlanta, Flower Branch, and he comes up for the Falcons. Yeah, he's gonna listen to me more than he's gonna listen to his dad. Oh, his dad is old. Is it because of status? Is it because no? It's not because, because of status. It's just because they feel like they've been raised by their dad, mm -hmm. and he's been telling them his whole life story, what he used to do, and how he did it back in the day. Okay, and they just feel my dad's old. That's old. <laughs> That's old school. That's old stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and then they see me. And no matter what that is, maybe they see me with, uh, maybe I got a Gucci shoes on or something. Okay. Oh, and coach is cool. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever that is. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got a gold chain on or something. So they say, oh, he's cool. And they just, for whatever reason, believe you got the answer. Yeah. Wow. And the answer's right there across the breakfast table phone. Yeah. But that's not who they're going to listen to. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what's happening today. And the other problem that's creeping up big time okay. is because in today's football, today's sports, so many of these youngsters are coming up. And being anointed, mm, oh, man. early, too early, very, very over specialized, early. over, mm -hmm. generalized, over. You know, fifteen years old driving a Bentley or something. You yeah. know, be, and now all of a sudden, even that good coach can't talk to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't have that. They don't have that. And none of them have a Haywood Jack in their life. Yeah. None of them have a Haywood Jack that they look up to, that they go chase. Me, me, me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's about me. Yeah. And they all think they're better than Haywood Jack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you t whatever the sport is, you take, uh, you know, baseball is some 17 years old, some of them, they think he's Mr. October. He's yeah. better than better than Reggie Jackson. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they think they're better than Michael Jordan. I'm going to be better than Michael Jordan. You know? Yeah. Be better than you. Don't mm -hmm. be sitting out there chasing Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah, how was that experience, though, um, you know, in the league? Uh, and how have you been able to uh, be a bridge between generations? You're looking at four mm -hmm. decades. Four mm -hmm. decades, five decades. Mm -hmm. I mean, five decades, including you being uh, a player mm -hmm. and then transitioning to coaching. Mm -hmm. And you've had to coach uh, in the NFL, which we're still having issues in regards to true diversity, mm -hmm. equity, and inclusion. Right. Um, of course. You know, for, for whatever reason, I, I just want to understand, uh, you know, that little, little bit. Yeah, the thing for me has always been, just like I'm sitting there now with Terry and his son sitting on the table. Yeah. When I'm getting involved with a young guy, uh, no matter who he is, I don't care how big his name is or yeah. how small he is, I'm, I'm with Terry. I'm with his dad. Yeah. Let me get on the same page with you. Okay. Because I want that kid to know when you walk into my room, for that day, for that minute, for that period, for that time, I'm your dad. Yeah. And this is our house right here. This is our, this is where we yeah, are. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And all I'm going to do is be extension of your dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, if his dad's got something or they've got something, that's not I'm not on par with. Then I'm gonna say, okay, hey, I don't I don't I don't agree with that. I see another way. You know what I mean? And I've got kids who his daddy would say, okay, it's okay, you can smoke a joint. No, you can't. Not with me. Yeah, not. Because you know what? I mean, we in a profession that we've been told you can't do that. Yeah. And I don't care if it's legal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, if you want to do what's legal, then you go there and do it. Okay. But you can't do it in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me give you another example. And it's just me. I'm, I am who I am. Absolutely. I just don't agree with. 
you wearing your pants off your ass, mm -hmm. and I could see your underwear, right. and you're walking down the street with my daughter. Yeah. No, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> I wasn't raised that way. Oh, so now, if your daddy, yeah, if your daddy okay with that, that's between you and your daddy. Yeah, but but right. you ain't gonna do it, my right. So here's how we handle that. Roddy White, cool, got a dreads, blah 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 blah. He walk in my meat room, he got his pants off. Right, Roddy, I can see your drawers. You owe me two hundred dollars. I find him. I find him two hundred dollars. I don't care who we are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Listen. You know, Roger Goodell, he just fired, uh, I mean, he uh, fined Dan Snyder $10 million. Okay. Dan worth $10 million, but that $10 million hurt. Yeah, yeah. hurt. Uh, so I don't care how much the players make at the end of the day. Now, I'll find Roddy, and I'm not trying to hurt him, make him feel bad, but I'm trying to get him to understand. No, we got rules. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I don't agree with that. that yeah. we, we're not going to do it in here. Right. Well, because you, know you said mean? that, and you brought that up. He's going to help the next person to say that changed me. Absolutely. Because I had a terrible business as yes. my coach in my life. In my life. Whether it's Absolutely. Julio, whether it's Hines, Absolutely. whether it's Champ. Absolutely. And Champ Bailey mentioned him in his Hall of Fame. He sure did. And yes, I don't sure think did. you ever played. I mean, uh, did he ever play for you? He was, yeah, Champ. Uh, that's why he loved me. Because he uh, he came to D.C. when I was there. Ken, yeah. Ken Riskins, I was there. But I ended up being the interim head coach. That's so, right. That's so, right. When, so when I moved over to the interim head coach, I had always told him, you know, there's a reason you play DB, you can't catch. You know, I always, <laughs> I, mean, I, always, I always told him that, you know what I mean? So that was a challenge for him. Yeah, right. But the day I became the head coach, I called him to come out and eat the seed. Yeah. I said, you're going to play receiver. So I made him go both ways. That's good. And I'm the only coach that put him over there and he scored a touchdown. Yeah. And made some big plays. We won the game. But he, uh, I, I became the intermediate coach. Yeah, he's, I him play. he's an no, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable player. Yeah. Unbelievable. But I took him and I put him on offense. And he scored his first and his only touchdown. Yeah, and uh, nobody else ever used him over there. And you, uh, possible. you coach Hines in the what, senior bowl? I, I coach Hines in the senior bowl, eleven. What was that experience like? Y'all kind of look like, yes, kind of like in the we look, we look, we look, we look, we look a whole lot alike. We look a whole lot alike. We look alike. We think alike. We act alike. Yep, we we a lot alike. We a lot alike. Gotcha. Uh, Hines is that's my dude. That's yeah. one of my guys. Yeah. And I'll tell people today if he's not the most brilliant. Minus football player I've ever coached. He's second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you wait a minute, wait a minute. That's, 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 that's big. That's not brilliant. That's not brilliant. Now listen, let me say this to you. Okay. When I put him in that category of brilliant, I'm speaking, let me just, let's just lock him up. I mean football wise. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, you know, take no, right there. Good. He went, I know he went to this school and it didn't take much to, education, it didn't take much to get into that job. <laughs> From an educational standpoint, it didn't take much to get in. Oh, and man. he probably went there because academically he couldn't get in no, the shoot. No, 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 no. I knew at some point this SEC was going to come yeah, up. Yeah, he didn't brought it up. You know? <laughs> he I, brought it up. Yeah, right. He went, to Georgia, you know, he went to Georgia. You know, he went to Georgia. But dude, Hyde Ward came. You know, we, we, we go to the senior bowl. We fly in on Sunday. Players come in on Monday. We have our first meeting. We spend weeks getting together, put together this little playbook. And we, it's not going to be too big because right. we're only there for a week. You right. Know? Man, this dude came in and I done spent a week putting this book together. Nice and pretty, you know, I give everybody their playbook, you know, I take the book, you know, blah, blah. So I tell my kids, you know, hey man, listen, when you come to my meeting, don't ever come in my room if you don't have a paper, a pencil, a notepad. Right. I say, you would, if you're a carpenter, and I always break the carpentry, if you're a carpenter, you wouldn't go on a job without a hammer, would you? Right. No. So don't ever come in here if you don't have a paper, a pencil, a pen, you know, write some, take notes. Okay, all right. Man, I'll take that big old playbook about this big, give that thing to Heinz, pass that thing out Monday night. Heinz ain't never brought that thing again. Wow. Every day that guy came to my room, I'd be, Coach, I'd be the boy, blah, 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 blah. He said, Hold on, hold on, Coach, you got that one there wrong. How the hell you know? You ain't taking no notes. You're not taking no notes. You don't have the book I gave you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes, and people can tell you that have worked with me, I will do something wrong. I'll say something on wrong purpose. on purpose. <laughs> to see if you're paying attention. Absolutely. Sometimes, I always give my players tests. You know, I give them a test on Friday, they do it on Friday or Saturday, they take their test. And I put wrong things on the test. Mm -hmm. And I put little notes on the test. I put a note on the test is, you know, uh, tell me what are we doing on this play here. And I say, anybody reading this test, if you, the first person that read this and come to me, I'll give you $100. And I have been hitting in there somewhere, but they got to read the fine print to find it. Yeah. And then some guys will find it. Hey, coach, I need this 100 Okay, come on, let's go. You know. Yeah. But I do things wrong. But not 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 the senior bowl. I wasn't doing that. Yeah. I'm at the board. A short time. But I'm at the board. I'm doing stuff, and I sitting there. He dude ain't never brought the playbook to me. Never. 
But he, I knew he was going back to his room at night, just studying it, studying it, studying it. And when the game, he never made a mistake. Mm. And listen, what he was at the Steelers, 15 years? Yeah. Right. Never made a mistake, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. But here's, here's my high, my, my high story. Highs is either the toughest or the second toughest football player I've ever seen from a receiver standpoint. Mm. Now, listen, Highs Ward was such a dominant guy, and I love him to death, that we, he played the Cleveland Browns, and one of our safeties was talking trash to him. Okay. And he told that boy, shut up and be quiet. And I went and told him, shut up and be quiet. Right. <laughs> shut up and be quiet. You understand? Because you know Highs head big, right. you know, hard he, as hell. And he liked he knocking balls out. He got big knots here. Right. Know? So Highs said, coach, you don't know, get him. You don't know, get him. I said, I didn't told him to shut up. <laughs> the boy talking about him in the paper, you know. I said, I didn't told him to shut up. Right. You know? And showing up, I can show you on film. Highs comes in one time and crack block him and hit him. Bang, he hit the bar. And when he hit him, he lifted him up off the ground. And before he hit the ground, he called a trainer. Yeah. He, he was still up in the air. Yeah. Why? You could see him waving the trainer to come get him. I'd have knocked him out. Yeah. Knocked him out cold. You know, but I took that and I bet you for 40 years, I coached off of that. Absolutely. For yes. 40 years. And I that's how he coached. Yeah. And for 40 years, I took that play and Heinz Ward play and I coached Roddy White. Julio Jones, Harry Douglas, mm -hmm. Eric Ween. Every receiver I've ever coached since. When I went to my meeting, they had to see how to play receiver. Because that's how this is how you play receiver. Yeah. You know, and it was great for me. Because I could sit on and tell a guy, Terry, what are you a punching back? Right. You're just gonna stand up here all day and let that corner just keep punching you and punching. Right. You ain't gonna do nothing to defend yourself, you ain't gonna fight back. You got a chance to go get him. Go get him. You know? And the greatest joy in life, you know, is when you Tell your kids something, and you tell your kids, hey, man, and you see him do it, and he does it with success, yeah. and it happens. And I showed that tape. I would show that tape every year in training camp, and I could go get it today. Mm -hmm. Roddy White comes in and cracked Chandler, the safety from uh, Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> cracked and hit him, knocked his helmet off the other way in there. Chandler caught the helmet and bounced around like that and then fell out. Mm -hmm. Roddy knocked him out. <laughs> till this day, till this day, you know, Roddy's my. You see, Rod is my stepson. Eric Ween is my son. Everybody's told me, you must have been dating <laughs> right. his mom. Right. You know, right. you must have been dating, dating Eric's mom. That looked just like you, and he act like you, and y'all both stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Harry's my grandson. But when Roddy hit Chandler that day, and that was a Heinz one day. That was a Heinz one day. day. Hey, and he called it before. Let, let's, let's switch it a little bit. Tell me about uh, your experiences uh, with Miss Rubisky, how she's been able to move with you and then you happen to move from like team to team is it business as usual or do you have a grudge like y'all mfs gonna get rid of me and i gotta move because you moved a couple times right yeah right. Uncle, Uncle that and then you been a family man and right of course yes. you was fortunate to, to raise yes. two, two two uh sons that mm -hmm. played uh, mm -hmm. in the league yes. as well yes. i was gonna ask you that you said that travis i was gonna say let's put a layer on it okay. especially the relationship with the wife and, and the move and then being a father, yeah. and what it took for you to still be that elite coach, yeah. and a provider in the house, not only for your wife, but for the family. And you're raising all these grandkids, children, hey, sons, 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 So yeah, so it's a lot of questions. And you got like 15 Hall of yes. so they, yes. they got egos. But we all, you know, we all kind of travel that path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have a little bit of something. Just like talking to Terry before we turned the camera on, said Terry, you know, talking about his son. Terry said, yeah, I got four. Got four sons? Back to back. Four, four sons? Back, back to back. Yeah, you know, like, you know, okay, one's 20, one's 21, one's 22, one's 20. This dude been naked half his life. <laughs> How do you make four sons back to back, back to back, back to back like that? You know what I mean? That's what I said. So it's like, wow, you know, this is unbelievable. Yeah, you know sons, I mean? by the yeah. way. Boys. Yeah. Boys, you yeah. know what I mean? And then most guys will say, well, he was trying to get a girl, but he couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a failure. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but the minute I see that, I'm thinking, here's a guy that can write a book. He can write on a book. making boys. On making boys. You know what I mean? He can sit down and literally say, let me tell you how we do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but for me, you know, the big thing for me is I feel like I feel like I got a book inside of me about how to stay married for 40 years. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely. I met her and I met my wife, and she's fantastic, you know, and I told her. You know, when she and I got together and met, I was in love with Sandra, my girl from home, you know? No, 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 but, but, no, you don't want to know about that. That's all right, don't want to talk about that one. But at the same time, you know, my wife and I got to be friends. She was dating somebody, I was dating somebody. Okay. And, and then uh, she, was she? No, 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 this is, this is uh, when I was with the Raiders. Later on, okay. okay. It's okay. a funny story, you okay. know, but it's long. I don't okay. want to get into all Yeah, let's do it. You know, well, what happened was, and she said, let's do it. I'll yeah, do it, yeah. you know what I mean? 
I went to San Francisco. My uncle's there. He's a playboy. He's hanging out. Got his house. Everything's good. I'm living in the basement. He's living upstairs. Okay. So he's dating this girl. This girl's got a niece. So the lady he's dating named Catherine. Me and Catherine become friends. Her sister comes over. We all become friends. And they're like, you know, Terry, you out there chasing everybody, just running, chasing. I bet you can't take my niece out. Ooh. Be careful where you're going. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So they said, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. I said, okay, all right, okay. All right. Well, you know, my wife today, their niece was still young, you know, and going to college, and you know, I'm this pro football player and all. I'm just telling you, she would never go out with you, and her mama wouldn't let her go. I said, you don't know me, man. You know me. Right. I've been breaking all the rules, breaking all the rules. Right. You know, I created records. Stoppers. I've been breaking records all the right, right, I'm right, telling you. Right, right. right. So they said, all right, all right, well, I tell you, if you could get her to go to dinner with you, we'll pay for it. Okay. Said, okay, all right, cool, 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 you know. So they figured I'm gonna go talk to, you know, go talk to Cindy and get to know her. And I don't know, I ease over to mama. Right, the mama. there you go. I ease over to mama. I left Cindy way over there, you know. Me and mama got talking, oh, what a nice young man. This guy's a nice young man. You yeah. listen to this great, this is great. Yeah. So eventually we got together, blah, 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 blah. We went out, I said, okay, y'all owe me some money. You know, I gotta pay for dinner. Yeah. No, 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 we want to go double or nothing. Okay. This okay. is the two options. Okay. We'll go double or nothing. I said, all right, well, you're going to double up on you. Know, we bet you can't get her to go to bed with you. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. So, oh. So, it's like that. So, so honey, it's put out of my right. You know what I'm saying? Out there in the streets. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so now I'm sitting down at the house, you know, we sitting down at the house. So, huh? The same I can tell them. They called up on the phone. Hey, you need to come over here and rub Terry's leg. Get leg hurt. Come rub his leg. Okay, you know? okay. And I said, y'all, okay, you get there. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> Hold on, man. What's so the song? It's about to go down. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? That's so, the so long story short, man, she's, uh, you know, me and her became great friends. Sid and I would go out, we'd hang out, we became friends. And we're just going out as friends. I was dating people and she was dating this guy. Okay. So I was dating everybody and she was dating this guy. Mm -hmm. So we hung out, we hung out. So she calls, she said, hey, you know, I'm going to a wedding. I'm going to Nate's wedding. That's her boyfriend, Nate. I'm going to his sister's wedding. Okay. God, y'all yeah, don't know what to wear. And, you know, I'm, 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 I come from a house of girls. Right on my mom, I've got three, four sisters, so I know what it is. Oh my God, the next day, Saturday morning, I'll never forget. I got up Saturday morning, went down to the mall. I brought a outfit, I brought her shoes. Uh, yes. Dress, okay. Belt, yes. purse. That killed. But but go to her boyfriend. Yes. Yes. So, I said, "Here's what you're gonna wear." And I laid it on the table. Yes. I said, "You gonna be the baddest girl in the room." Right. You put this on. Oh my gosh, she started crying. Yes, yeah. they cried. So then, mama, my mama bitch, why are you wasting your time with that boy over there? This is the man right here. Yeah. What are you hey, doing? He dressing like this man. What are you doing? Yeah. So happened so. Sin and I stopped hanging out, dating right. a little bit. So then our daddy comes in and says, hey, listen, you know, we got these four bedrooms here, you know, you be coming over here and stuff, and you be staying on the couch talking with Cindy, three, four, I got you some pajamas. So if you want to stay, you can just go ahead and stay in the extra room over there. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You make it a little easier. Yeah. 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 You see what I'm saying? So this is getting good, you know what I mean? <laughs> so finally one night, Cindy and I go out, we talking, and we sitting down talking, she's not sitting down talking, yeah. and having dinner. And I said, what is it you want in life? Mm -hmm. you know, tell me what you're trying to do, what's okay. your goal? And she said, well, I want to get married, you know, have a family, maybe a house on the hill, white big fence, little dog in the yard, you know. I said, well, boy, I don't, I don't, I don't make that much money. I don't know if I could, I could build a white big fence. I'm right. Like, oh, right. I don't know if I could afford a dog. Yeah. <laughs> so we sit there talking, and I said, well, could you ever marry a friend? And she mm. said, yeah. She said, yeah, I probably could marry a friend. I said, all right. You want to get married? Let's get married. Oh, man. And she's like, shut up. That's she what's said, up. That's what's she up. said, we, 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 we're not even dating. Right. You know, I said, well, I don't know what you call it. I don't know what I call yeah, it. Yeah, right. I said, but, hey, I'm seeing you. You're my best friend. Yeah. Right. You know, if you want to do this, let's do it. You know, I said, if I can't marry my best friend, you want to marry You know what I mean? Hey, so guys, said, let me hold on, coach. I had to do this to you. That's all right. Man. Do what you got. Man. That's huge. That's huge. Yes, yes, yes. And the conversation's so rich. Yes. And the reason why I stopped, because I'm gonna let him go and then, then, then two things. When we talk about this thing in life, relationships, mm -hmm. but even as uh, men, as we go through the matriculation, he started off as a man of faith. We were told that we become a carpenter, a butler, mm -hmm. and a pharaoh to those who are in our lives, the people that we love, yep. the profession that we're in, yep. And then why is why is those things significant? Because you look in the Bible, they are imparting and enriching. They're building up. They're serving. 
Yeah. Their provider. Right. That's right. And he in that relationship with his wife, who he loves dear dearly today, he's been there and continues to do that. As a coach, he's done that and That's continues to impart. That's why he has a relationship to these Hall of Fame talk about. Absolutely. Family. When you talk about as a father, That's he's true. done that. So I stopped. Because I don't want you guys to miss, miss that piece. As a mentor. And as a right. mentor, he still yes. did that role. Yes. So I want you guys to understand when you talk about what's the impact I can have as this great person in business, in athletics, or in family, are you willing to be that carpenter, yeah. that butler, yeah. and that pharaoh? No and question. when you are, there are blessings that are abundantly there. No question. Yeah. No question. Guys, I'm going to mess you up. We got to bring Coach back for a part two. This is, you know, we're just in the middle of it, and we just now touching the surface. Yeah. So we're going to do a part two. So this is part one. So yeah. know that. Yeah. So what we're about to say is, hold on. We're not done. Come back to part two of In the Game by Maven Sports. I'm Terry Johnson. I'm Travis Stroud. I'm Terry Biscuit. <laughs> With In the Game. Man. That's the real Terry. Man. Hey, guys, this has been a phenomenal part one of our conversation. Wait till we come back. We're going to add another guest and we're going to keep going because coaches just now get in the middle of it. We want to talk about that moment when he transitioned from being an athlete to a, to a coach to a mentor to a mentor to what he's getting ready to do next yeah. that, that we're excited about. So stay, stay tuned to come back to end the game. We'll see you next time. Yes, sir.